Hi, I'm Dr. Mo, and today's lecture is going to be about population dynamics. In particular, we are going to explore how populations change over time and some of the different reproductive strategies that organisms use. To start, I should probably define what a population is, just so that we are all on the same page. A population is organisms of the same species that live in the same geographic area. What is important to notice about this definition is that the organisms all need to be the same species. So for example, you could have a population of red pandas, or a population of bamboo trees, or even a population of Canada geese. But everything has to be the same species. It is also critical that the species live in the same region so that, so that they have the possibility to interact with each other. Populations of organisms change over time. If we're interested in determining the growth rate of a population, what we would normally do is, over the span of any given year, we would look at the number of births per 1,000 individuals, or what we call the birth rate, and we would subtract the number of deaths per 1,000 individuals, or what we call the death rate. And as you might suspect, there are three possible outcomes. Either the population will grow, it will shrink, or it will stay about the same size. We call these population dynamics. An easy way to visualize the population dynamics for a species is to plot the change in the number of organisms against the passage of time. Since time is independent of populations, or what we would normally call the independent variable, our convention is to plot data with time on the x or horizontal axis, and then population size on the y or vertical axis. For our plot, it makes the most sense to have both axes growing larger away from the origin, shown here by these arrows. If we were to add a new population of a species into an environment that they can be successful in and provide it with unlimited resources, what we would expect to see is something called exponential growth. In other words, at first the population is small and the growth is very slow. But as long as the organism has a high birth rate and a low death rate, then what we should expect to see is that as organisms reproduce, the population will grow exponentially over time. This process is not limited to just adding a population into a new environment but it could also happen seasonally as an influx of new resources occurs that allows for rapid population growth. In reality, populations don't have unlimited resources, and even if a species has the biotic potential to grow exponentially, often environmental controls tend to make it difficult for it to actually grow exponentially. We usually refer to these things as density-dependent factors. When population densities are very low, for most species, this means that it is hard to find a mate, and this limits the initial growth rates. But when populations start to grow, the density of the population increases competition for existing resources. It also increases the population of predators, who also suddenly have more resources available to them, and Diseases also spread more easily in large populations. Environmental resistance factors can also include density-independent factors, such as natural disasters or uh, something along those lines, a fire, a flood. These usually affect populations negatively, regardless of how large they are. Environmental resistance factors that are density-dependent cause a decrease in the growth rates as the populations get larger. And what this means is, rather than an exponential curve, more typically, population growth is logistic. The idea of logistic growth is that the typical J-shaped exponential curve becomes more S-shaped as the population grows, reaching some theoretical limit in the growth rate over time. This theoretical growth limit is what ecologists refer to as the carrying capacity of a species. In other words, 
how many organisms of a given species can be supported in a particular environment. It may not be the same from year to year as resources, diseases, and predator populations change, but eventually it reaches some sort of broadly stable condition. Each population should have its own carrying capacity, traditionally labeled as K. As the exponential growth of a population starts to flatten out, over time it will eventually approach the carrying capacity in a healthy population. It should be noted that over short periods, it is possible for a population to actually exceed the carrying capacity. Short-term population booms can cause populations to grow and overshoot this limit. But eventually, density-dependent factors such as predators or disease will catch up with it and cause it to crash down below the carrying capacity. Populations of different species often will use different reproductive strategies to deal with growth rates and predation. In ecology, these are usually broken into two end members of a gradient. On one end, we have R selected species. The R is for growth rate. In general, these types of organisms have a high number of offsprings each time they give birth. They usually have a small body size. They mature fast, which produces short generation times, and they can often disperse their offspring into the environment very widely. Our adapted species usually don't take care of their offspring and they tend to be generalists in their environment and often they are heavily preyed upon. There are many examples of organisms that use our selected reproductive strategies. For example, in a previous lecture we talked about how a single aphid could give rise to billions of aphids over a span of a single season. Bunnies Spiders, mice, dandelions, I'm sure you can easily think of small organisms in many different environments that utilize the same type of strategy. On the other end of the spectrum, there are organisms that are K-selected. In other words, the K is for carrying capacity, and they tend to have a limited carrying capacity in any environment. The usual characters for these groups are things like long life expectancy, they grow very slowly, they have large body sizes, they have fewer offspring, and the offspring take a long time to mature. As you might expect, most K-adapted species exercise high parental care, they are specialists in their environment, and they are usually predators that are adapted to stable environmental conditions. Examples of K-adapted species are things like bears, elephants, and whales. These are, of course, simplistic models of population dynamics, but they are a very effective way to think about reproductive strategies. Many organisms probably lie somewhere along the gradient between R and K-selected species, but considering them gives us language to help explain our observations of them in nature. This is the main ideas of population dynamics. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.